Good morning. Uh, my name is Pablo Villablanca. I'm one of the neuroradiologists here at UCLA. Uh, today we'll be doing a brief webinar on uh, painful spinal metastases and some new and exciting techniques to manage these conditions. Uh, I'd like to invite you to ask questions on Twitter. You can use hashtag UCLAMDChat. So we're going to be talking about a new technique for a problem that's really plagued us as uh, clinical providers and many of our patients for many years. And that's the management of metastases, that spread of cancer from the original part in the body into the spine, uh, and what's the best way to manage that. Most of our patients had been uh, treated with uh, conventional uh, radiotherapy, uh, external beam radiation therapy, as it's called, or chemotherapy. But now we have some exciting new techniques uh, that I'd like to share with you this morning that are really helping us to improve the quality of life for our patients and to diminish their pain dramatically. Uh, the treatment is called targeted radiofrequency ablation with the STAR tumor ablation system. It's specifically for treating metastases that involve the vertebra of the spine all the way from the first thoracic vertebra to the lowest lumbar and sacral vertebra. The device is, of course, also approved for use anywhere in the skeletal system, but this is the only device that's actually specifically FDA approved for use in the spine because of the safety profile, as I'll share with you in a few minutes. The goal is to really get fast and good relief of pain uh, from these metastases, which can really be troublesome and diminish the quality of life for many of our patients uh, dealing with cancer, particularly when it's spread to the spine. And we have some references that I'll refer uh, you to during this presentation. Uh, scientific literature where the data that that uh, validates the technique has been submitted for peer-reviewed publication and is available. And we also have additional information through the NIH at the Clinical Trials Gov uh, site. We know that metastatic disease uh, to the bone impacts a large and uh, underserved patient population, specifically when it applies to the spine. You can see in this slide that many different types of malignancies can spread to the spine. The most common are lung and breast with almost 4 million cases um, uh, in uh, the time period that we looked at here, which is about a five-year period per the, the, the five-year worldwide incidence. So this is a really a common condition. And you can see that if you look at the incidence of bone metastases for the different malignancies that appear here on the left-hand side, you can see that the incidence of metastatic disease, meaning the number of times in which patients with that condition will experience a metastasis to their, to their bones, is really quite high. Also, you can see that on the far right column here, many of these patients will live not just for weeks or months, but for many years. And so what we're really looking to do is to improve the quality of life for those patients while they continue to receive treatment. So in this slide, we can see that really this is a very ubiquitous problem. Almost 5 million Americans are currently living with cancer that's been diagnosed within the last five years. And about you know, 85 or more percent of these patients will have metastatic spinal tumors uh, that involve one or more segments of their spine at some point during their disease. On this slide, we can see that many of the cancers have decreased. Uh, thanks to new detection methods, to better treatment methods with chemotherapy, with radiotherapy, other treatments, uh, and particularly for lung and bronchus, which is the blue line up here. You can see that since 19, about 1985, we've had a nice steady decrease. Prostate, colon, and rectum have also decreased, and stomach continues to decrease in its uh, incidence. On the y-axis, you have the number of people per 100,000 in the population who get this cancer. And then there's some pesky ones that, that we really haven't had, although they're not common, we really haven't had a big impact on decreasing either their incidence and in some cases their mortality, like in the case of prostate. All of these metastases can spread to the bone, including the uh, spinal elements. Here we can see that most of the standard therapy for uh, tumors that are spread to the spine is radiation therapy, external beam radiotherapy, sometimes stereotactic radiosurgery, which is really focused radiation to specific uh, lesions, and then chemotherapy. But we have a number of patients who simply don't respond to these uh, treatments, either chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Uh, and in fact, some patients have tumors that are known to be unresponsive from the get-go. So some sarcomas, are, for instance, would be an example 
of tumors that don't respond well to chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And this is a type of patient that we think we have something to offer with this radiofrequency ablation. Now, radiofrequency ablation is a technique that's been used extensively to treat soft tissue tumors, tumors in the liver, either primary or metastatic, tumors in the prostate gland for males, osteodosteoma, which is a specific tumor of bone, lung cancer, and kidney. Bone is an area where we've received some attention, and particularly studies have shown that patients that have lesions that are treated with radiofrequency energy to burn and kill the tumor receive over 90% of them receive a clinically significant relief in their pain. And because of that, they're able to diminish the amount of pain medication that they're used. Frequently, the pain medication that's used is an narcotic analgesic. And not only does that medication diminish pain, but it also diminishes our awareness. We're sleepier, we're more tired, and we're less able to interact with our family members, our workmates, et cetera. And that can also decrease the quality of life. So in the past, we've seen a relatively limited adoption of these radiofrequency ablation techniques to treat painful bone metastases and spine metastases in spite of the fact that there's been quite a bit of data showing that it is helpful in the soft tissues. And the main limitation for the bone, and particularly the spine, is that the tools, the devices, the specific devices that we use, really haven't been adapted properly for work in hard, more dense bones, and really haven't had the ability to navigate or maneuver within bone. And that's one of the exciting things about this new technique. So this is the a device, it's called a targeted RF ablation device. What it allows is controlled access using a cannula that's advanced through the skin, through the muscle, into the affected bone, parked in the lesion itself using low-dose CT guidance for confirmation of position of the device. And then the other nice thing that you'll see about this is that the tip of the device, sort of the business end, is curved. And what that curve means is that I can navigate from one part of the bone all the way to the other side to make a lesion that encompasses the entire metastasis without the need to enter the bone from multiple sites repeatedly. And this means that the procedure is much less traumatic and much better tolerated by patients so that they can literally come in in the morning, have their procedure, and then go out immediately if it's for a, uh, a long bone or if it's in the vertebra and we've added some bone cement, we'll watch them overnight and then they can leave the next morning. One of the nice things about the device is that it allows us to very carefully regulate the temperature at the tip because we are burning the tumor to kill that cancer. And it allows us to regulate the temperature at the tip and make a lesion of very specific size. And it is this type of control that appeals to me. As a neuroradiologist, I want to make sure that I do everything to alleviate my patient's suffering but don't contribute to their woes by having a device that maybe is not properly or well controlled. With this device, I can make very specific lesions. I can get real-time information about the growth of that lesion, uh, the radiofrequency burn, to make sure that its size matches the size and shape of the patient's tumor. This is a magnified view of the device. You can see that there's two little yellow dots there towards the shaft distally. Those are the thermocouples that allow me to very accurately determine the temperature. And without actually seeing the size of the lesion that's being created, be able to estimate that size uh, based on the temperatures that I read from the distal and proximal thermocouples. So this is a degree of precision that really hasn't been available before. And this now opens up the safety margin for us to offer this procedure to patients uh, in the spine, knowing that we have a margin of safety and can do the procedure safely. So this is a little mock-up of somebody who would be on their stomach on the CT scanner, and you can see that the device has been advanced through a little bridge of bone called the pedicle into the vertebra. This brown zone is the lesion within the vertebra. And then once the device is there, I can turn the tip of the device to curve around and match the shape of the tumor. And I can do this repeatedly in the shape, in the case of an irregular or lobulated lesion, to make sure that every burn I make in the sum of it, even if it's a cauliflower shape, it matches the shape of the tumor so that I get <clears throat> maximal tumor kill. The RF energy here can be delivered very accurately and I can actively and dynamically monitor the temperature change so that I know precisely the shape of the lesion that I'm creating. The effect of this is to debulk the tumor 
to kill much or all of the tumor if possible, and the effect of that is to diminish the pain that arises from the metastasis. Most of the pain from metastatic disease to the spine comes from the outer part of the vertebra, where many of the nerve endings are located. So it is sometimes when the tumor approaches that outer part that the patients begin to experience pain. Sometimes it's just pressure, the expansile pressure of the tumor within the vertebra that is very painful. In either way, this radiofrequency ablation technique is very effective in diminishing that pain. Here's an individual that had a metastatic lesion to the very back of the vertebra, just in front of the spinal canal where the spinal cord lives. There's a very thin rim of bone separating it from the spinal canal. This is the patient's uh, belly here, and this is their back. The patient is on their stomach on the CAT scan table. You can see that with CT, all the bones are white and the soft tissues are kind of gray or dark. You can see that the device has been advanced through that little bridge of bone called the pedicle into the lesion. The, the, the tip of the device has been curved because you really can't access this front of part of this very back part of the vertebra here by coming in from the side, but by articulating the curve, you can really get right at that lesion to make the appropriate burn. And here on an MRI of that area that was performed after the lesion was obtained, you can see that the size of the lesion is very much as we had intended it to be, about two centimeters in length by one and a half centimeters in width, which more than encompasses the lesion. And this is all made possible by looking at the temperature readings in the distal and proximal thermocouples. And again, this is live information coming to us from the device as we are actually making the lesion. And here again an MRI showing the very accurate dimensions, just as we would have estimated based on the temperature readings when we actually make the measurements. Here the lesion is, is outlined on the MRI scan. And then here you can see that the vast majority of the lesion was killed. Maybe here there's a little blob of tumor tissue that was left behind, but that can be addressed either through the chemotherapy or the conventional radiotherapy, or if necessary, a repeat ablation, which would then try to pick up that little tiny bit. But this individual uh, indicated uh, that they had received a remarkable degree in reduction of their pain. Here's a patient that I treated several months ago. This is a, a gentleman uh, with a very painful metastasis to the fourth lumbar vertebra. This is a view of the gentleman's lumbar spine from the front. You can see that kind of low density, darkish lesion. Here it is on the axial images. These images are like taking slices through the loaf of bread uh, transversely. Here's the back of the spine. I've marked the skin where I'd like to enter. Now I'm advancing the device into the lesion. On this lower left image, you can see that I've articulated that uh, radiofrequency tip to match the exact shape and curve of that tumor mass. And after killing the tumor, because now you're left with a cavity that really has no bone integrity, I am placing in a sterile manner a small amount of bone cement that when it hardens will be at least as hard as the patient's own native bone. So here we've accomplished burning and killing of the tumor, reduction in pain, and also stabilization of the vertebra through the administration of the bone cement through the exact same device that's being used to perform the tumor kill. The other advantage of this device is that through that same device, if it were necessary, I could obtain a sample of tissue that would allow you to confirm that yes, this is in fact breast cancer or lung cancer, whichever the malignancy is. And in some patients, they unfortunately have more than one malignancy. And the treatment that they, that they receive determines in part, is determined in part by what type of metastasis this is. So in some cases, obtaining additional tissue can be very, very important. In other cases, they want to monitor the response of the tumor to medication that's being received, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and uh, obtaining an additional sample of tissue allows us to do all the sophisticated tests that may be necessary to make the determination of how that tumor is responding genetically and uh, at the cellular level. Here's another individual who had a, a very painful spinal metastasis. This is to the L2 vertebra, a little higher up in the lumbar spine. And you can see here that the device has been advanced to a slightly more direct route, again using that bridge of a bone called the pedicle. Here's the spinal canal. Here the tip has been articulated, and you can see that after the tumor has been burned, and a, a good amount of bone cement, which is the white material, has been delivered into this vertebra that had already collapsed from the presence of the tumor. This is called a pathologic compression fracture, which in and of itself can be extremely painful. And after the tumor has been 
uh, uh, cemented here and killed. This vertebra is now stabilized. We know that no additional pain will be caused by the presence of the metastasis and the pathologic compression fracture. And this individual had a remarkable reduction in pain. This is somebody who loves to uh, go on their houseboat uh, in Lake Havasu. And I did the procedure on a Friday. I uh, saw the patient uh, Saturday morning and wanted to know if he could go out to Lake Havasu. I said, absolutely. And he had a wonderful time. So this is something that works very, very quickly. That's one of the nice and appealing things about the radiofrequency procedure as compared to conventional external beam radiation. That technique can take up to nine weeks to be effective. And with this technique, you may see results as quickly as one or two days, more frequently around the range of a week. But the pain responses are really quite dramatic. And we'll look at some of that data in a few minutes. Here's another individual who had a PET scan. The PET scan showed a very hot spot there with a lot of glucose metabolism happening in, in that uh, uh, T10 thoracic vertebra. And then here you can see that the lesion not only has destroyed bone, but has caused a reaction in the bone where the bone around it has become very dense. And this is again where this device comes in so handy. You can see that the tip is very pointed. It can get through that extremely hard bone. And after that introducer is removed, you are left with a hollow shaft through which then can be passed the device that makes the burn to kill the tumor. And then here you can see that bone cement is being administered. And one of the things I really like about this device is that even though this lesion has destroyed the cortex in this vertebra, and normally with the administration of regular cement, much of that cement might come out outside of the vertebra where it would do us no good. This cement is prepared in such a way that if I administer a little bit and allow it to harden for a few minutes, it'll seal up or plug up that opening. And then I can continue to administer bone cement and completely fill up that cavity so that that patient's lesion is fully treated. The bone cement, interestingly, is at what's called an exothermic reaction. It continues to produce heat as the bone cement cures, and that can cause additional killing of tumor cells. The technique, of course, can be used not just in spinal metastases, but in other sites of metastatic disease. This is a gentleman who had uh, a metastatic colon cancer, had many lesions, but the ones that were really troubling him were in his thigh, proximally. So here's a lesion in the femur, which we treated and cemented, one in the ischium here in the, in the lower pelvis, and then uh, one in the spine that I showed you uh, a moment ago. So again, multiple lesions can be treated over the course of the two and a half years that I had the privilege of knowing this gentleman, we treated six lesions, and I think that the quality of his life was markedly improved. He was able to reduce the amount of pain medication that he was taking, was able to walk much better, and was able to uh, enjoy his days with a minimum of pain. So the benefits of vertebral augmentation in cancer patients uh, and of radiofrequency ablation is immediate relief of pain. This procedure can be done whether you are or are not receiving or plan to receive or have received radiation and chemotherapy, so in no way impacts your ability to continue to get those treatments. It's performed on an outpatient basis. It's a simultaneous option to biopsy if we should need to do that. If we add the bone cement, we can restore vertebral height. If the procedure that's performed is a kyphoplasty, where we additionally augment the height of the vertebra a bit, and we know that there's a potential anti-tumor effect of the bone cement, as I mentioned a moment ago, through the additional heating that's provided as that bone cement cures over the course of several minutes. So here's a study looking at the use of radiofrequency ablation, the burning of the tumor, together with external beam radiotherapy, or RT. So in this group, we looked at a number of patients that had been treated just with the radiotherapy, and we looked at their overall response, their amount of relief, uh, this, is, this would be pain reduction for overall response, time to pain relief, and uh, the incidence of recurrent pain as a percent. And you can see that when the patients were treated just with external beam radiotherapy, about 60% had some reduction in pain, but it took them to have about nine weeks to have that reduction. In contrast, for those individuals that were treated with the radiofrequency ablation and had also received the radiotherapy, there was an increase in response to over 90%. And the time to pain relief was only three weeks. In addition to that, pain relief, full and complete pain relief, was achieved in about 50% of patients treated at that lesion, as compared to only 16% for patients who received external beam radiotherapy. And only less than 10% of patients had recurrent pain with a radiofrequency approach, as compared to nearly 30% for the external beam radiotherapy alone. Here's a fairly big study done by uh, Dr. Jennings 
where we looked at a number of different cancer types here, essentially encompassing all the common cancer types. We looked at lesions all the way through the thoracic spine into the lumbar spine and then the portions of the pelvis. Some patients even had lesions in the back of the spine. And by the back of the spine, I mean this part of the vertebra here. We're talking mostly about the body of the vertebra so far. But in the back of the spinal canal, you have additional plates of bone. And if metastatic lesions go here, then uh, it's very difficult to treat those with radiotherapy. But with the RF device, I can deliver the device to any one of these little bones that might have a metastasis to it and that could be contributing to pain. So they had a number of lesions that had that, and the majority of the lesions received the cement augmentation. They saw, as has been our experience, no complications related to the procedure, and all patients reported relief. If you look at pain using the pain score, which some of you may be familiar with, unfortunately, where zero is pain-free and 10 is the most unimaginable pain you can possibly conceive of, uh, most of these patients came in with pretty high pre-procedural pain levels. Here are 7.35 out of 10, zero being pain-free. And after the procedure, at six months, the patients were under a two, and at about one week, they were about a two and a half. So this is really very statistically significant uh, and very significant decreases in pain reduction for these patients to the point where many of them report that the quality of their life is substantially improved. So there's additional scientific literature in support of this technique that indicates that it's not only safe but also effective in reducing pain that's related to painful spinal metastases to the thoracic, uh, the lumbar spine, and the sacrum. Here's another uh, study with 110 spinal metastases. A good number of them also included pedicles and the posterior part of the vertebra. You can see that the pain score started out quite high at a mean and median of 8 and uh, 8.0, these are very high pain scores for these individuals, unfortunately. Unfortunately, and these decreased to 3.9 at one week, 2.9 at four weeks. So we're really under three. No major complications, no instances of symptomatic ex cement extravasation, where the cement goes someplace where we don't want it to go. And their conclusions were, were that for this particular study, that combined radiofrequency ablation and vertebral augmentation is safe and effective therapy for the palliation of painful uh, spinal, thoracolumbar spinal metastases, including tumor involving the posterior elements and the pedicles. Another study by Zhang published in 2014, again, looking at uh, these individuals showing no complications, no evidence of tumor recurrence, pain scores decreasing significantly. So we have a number of investigators now publishing their experiences, uh, indicating that the technique is safe, that it's effective, and it's an excellent alternative for those patients in whom radiation and or chemotherapy has failed to provide the pain relief that they seek or who have not responded uh, to those treatments. So to review, we've got a technique here that's minimally invasive. It provides a very precise image-guided delivery of energy using CT guidance to kill just the tumor cells that are present. It does not interrupt medical management in any way. In other words, you can continue to receive your systemic chemotherapy or your whole spine radiation. Uh, it does provide acute pain relief, enabling radiotherapy and radiosurgery to continue at their own pace if necessary. And it is associated with improvements in the quality of life because of the pain reduction that's accomplished. It has pretty broad clinical utility. We can extend the window where patients might be eligible for radiotherapy by being able to manage appropriately the pain coming from a specific uh, lesion or lesions. It is compatible with chemotherapy. It's excellent for radio-resistant tumor. And for those patients that have already been maximized on external beam radiotherapy or radiosurgery, they've responded, but they've maximized. And now they have lesions that are still giving them trouble. This radiofrequency technique is an excellent option. We are now part of a multi-center uh, uh, registry where we will follow and have been following patients at UCLA that have received this procedure so that we ourselves can continue to monitor in a very specific and accurate way with support of the medical center and of our institutional review board all of the uh, signs and symptoms that we would expect them to respond to. This device has been out and in clinical use for some years now. It is fully FDA approved. It's not an experimental device. So it's really, it's ready for prime time. 
And I think that for those of our patients that are suffering from sp painful spinal metastases, it's an excellent option. So in conclusion, combined bipolar radiofrequency ablation and application of bone cement for painful spinal metastases is a safe and effective option for patients who have failed conventional chemotherapy and radiation, or as a first-line treatment in selected patients, it's an excellent option for pain control in patients with radiation and chemotherapy resistant tumors. And as compared to radiosurgery, this technique offers the option of pain reduction that's very quick, simultaneous bone biopsy, and vertebral stabilization with bone cement who, are, who have already experienced or are at risk of experiencing collapse of their bone because of the metastatic lesion that's present in the vertebra. And finally, radiofrequency ablation has been shown to lead to a significant reduction in pain and medication use, which is really one of the most significant things to me as a provider of this procedure. So I thank you so much for your attention, and I'd now like to open it up for any questions that we might have. Thank you. So one of the questions that we've received from one of the viewers is, can I have the radiofrequency ablation procedure while I am undergoing chemotherapy and or radiotherapy? And the answer is definitely yes. You can have the those techniques given to you either before the radiofrequency ablation, uh, you can have it during the time that the procedure is being done or around the time that the procedure is being done because it really only takes an hour to do this technique, or you can have it done after. So it no way excludes you from receiving additional chemotherapy, even new treatments that may come along the way, uh, or additional external beam radiotherapy, assuming you are a candidate for additional radiotherapy to that lesion. A second uh, question that I received is, what is the recovery time for this procedure? So as you've seen, the procedure is done through a device that's really about two and a half millimeters wide. Uh, so all that's required is a little tiny stab incision in the skin after it's been properly anesthetized, uh, and, um, and then a little Band-Aid uh, at that spot once the device is removed. So there's no incision, there's no stitches. Most patients do report a little achiness uh, in that area for a couple of days, but generally not much. Uh, and compared to the pain levels that they were experiencing before the procedure was done, uh, certainly far less than, <clears throat> than what they had been experiencing. So I'd say generally one to three days for recovery time. Another question here that I've got is, uh, how long can I expect before I obtain relief from my pain? This is an excellent question. Most of our patients have reported that for lesions that are lytic, meaning lesions where the bone is dissolved by the tumor, uh, relief can be obtained as quickly as one day and generally by the first week. For patients that have sclerotic lesions, meaning ones where the bone has reacted by making more bone or very dense bone, those patients may require a bit more time. And I had gen one gentleman with a very, very dense sclerotic metastasis who took three weeks to respond, but he did respond. And this was after having almost nine months of excruciating pain in the femur. Uh, so I was very, very uh, pleased to see that response. Another question that I've received here from one of the audience members is, can I receive additional chemotherapy and or radiation therapy after I have undergone this procedure? And the answer, of course, is yes, you can. This in no way excludes you from having the procedure. Uh, and uh, you could have the procedure either at that level again, if you needed to, or at subsequent levels. And none of those uh, procedures would interfere with your ability to receive the ongoing treatment that you're getting from your oncologist uh, or from your radiation therapist. Uh, if that is the case. If there are no other questions, then maybe we'll conclude this morning's session. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the radiofrequency ablation of painful spinal metastases. Thank you so much.